Hi, my name is Bart Polson, and in this tutorial, I want to show you how to manipulate data in the online statistics program StatCrunch, uh, mostly by learning how to stack columns and split columns, as well as uh, work with some indicator columns, as a way of getting the data put into the form they need to be for certain analyses like t-tests and analysis of variance and regression. It's a pretty simple procedure, actually. Actually, it's very simple in StatCrunch, and so that's uh, one of the beautiful things about the program. Uh, to show you how this works, I'm going to use a data set that's called Seeding Choice versus GPA. And you can get it if you go to Explore, data, and then uh, type in seeding choice, in, and you'll find it. I've got a couple of other data sets I've made based on this one, but they have different titles, so anyhow. Seeding, so seeding choice versus GPA. And what we have here is hypothetical data, I believe, <coughs> from 30 students. 10 students who sat in the front row, 10 in the middle row, and 10 in the back row. And we have GPAs for them. And um, Again, I think the data are artificial because the pattern becomes so clear. <clears throat> but anyhow, this is the format in which you would want the data for certain analyses like a, a t-test or possibly a one-way analysis of variance. Um, on the other hand, there are other procedures like a, um, other kinds of analyses of variance where you want to have the data not in separate rows for each group, but you want to have them all on top of each other. And that's really simple to do here. All you do is you come up here to data and click on data and come down here to stack columns because we have three columns of data and we're going to stack them on top of each other and click on that and then I just tell it that I'm using these three columns front and middle and back and by the way I had to hold down the shift key while I clicked on those things now it's going to create two new columns one of them is going to have uh, is going to say whether the people are in the front or middle or back row and so I'm just going to call that one row that makes sense. And then the values are the actual numbers. In this case, they're GPAs. And so I'm going to put that down as GPA. So I select all three of them. They're going to stack them. And row and GPA. Okay. Press stack columns. And it says two new columns have been added. And there they are. Now I have a variable that says row. It goes front and middle and back. And there are the GPAs. And you can see, for instance, that this 3062 is the same as that 3062 because that person's in front. Uh, the first one for the person in the middle is a 2859. There's the 2859. And then, for instance, we have a 2646 for somebody here in the back. And there's that 2646. So it's the same data. Very easy. Now, I want to show you, you can go the other way, too. If, for example, your data come in this way, uh, say we didn't have those three, and we just had this one with the front, middle, back, and the GPAs, but because we were going to do uh, a t-test and we needed this data in this shape, you can go back the other way just as easily. All you got to do is go to data again, and this time we're going to split the column. All right, that's easy. All we have to do is tell it where which column has the data. The That's the GPA in this case. That's column. So I click it and I go down to GPA. And then the group column, that's the one that we're going to split the scores by. In this case, it's row. We want to create different columns for row. Drop on that and then press Create Groups. And three new columns. And check it out. Now we have back GPA, front GPA, and middle GPA. Um, it's just it's put it in alphabetical order here as opposed to front, middle, back over here. But you see it's exactly the same. Here's the back row, 2583. 2583. Here's the front, a 4, and there's the front, and there's a 4. Uh, actually, it's kind of nice because this time it's, it gives us both the row and what the variable is right here is the GPA. It works really well. Now, I want to do just one more thing and talk about how to show indicator variables because some procedures like correlation and regression can't work with a, uh, a row variable that's written in text. It needs to be in numbers. Um, one way to do that is to change it with ones, twos, and threes, but because correlation works really well if you have a just two values, a zero and a one, a stack crunch does have a way of making this really easy. Uh, now I'm going to take just a second and I'm going to delete these three columns because I don't need them right now. And to do that, you come over to data, data table, delete columns, and if I come down here and I just click that one, shift click, shift click, and delete. 
and they are gone. All right. As a matter of fact, I'm going to do something else just because I can. I'm going to move this row over to here. Uh, because we're in uh, using an online program that uses Java, you have you can't just drag it over. I'm going to go to data table, and I'm going to move a column. This stuff that I'm doing is not necessary. I'm just going to move it to the very end. Okay, fine. So now I have the GPAs all stacked right there. Then I have that one. Because I'm going to create a little indicator variable for these ones. And what I'm going to do, an indicator variable is a 0, 1. It indicates the absence or the presence of something. It, it'll make sense in just a moment. Come to data, down to indicator columns. Great. And the indicator column is going to be for the row that people are in. And there we go. Now, because there are three possible values, front or middle or back, it creates three indicator columns to say whether a person is yes in the front or yes in the back. So this person, for instance, is in the front row. So they get a zero for row equals back because they're not in the back. They get a one for row equals front because they are in the front. And they get a zero for row is middle because they're not in the middle. And you can see how when we get to the middle, yes, they are in the middle and back. And it shifts around. Um, now, you don't really need all of these. Um, I have in mind doing some analyses later that compare people in the front row to people who are not in the front row. And so I only need this one. I'm going to do something here. It's not absolutely necessary, but it helps clean it up. The way I deleted a column just a moment ago, I'm going to get rid of the row that says the back and the row that says the middle. So I have just the front. And then, because I don't need to say row equals front, when I have an indicator variable, I like to have the variable called whatever the one is. In this case, I just get on there and start hitting backspace front row. And now I can do correlation and regressions using that as well. Anyhow, mostly in this one I just want to show you how to stack and split columns and do a few other things like deleting and moving columns and renaming and creating indicators. And um, I'll come back and use uh, similar data in a future one on doing t-test analysis of variance. Hope it's been helpful. Thanks.